So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I got it right that time. I normally, I normally say good morning. So, how are you all going? I must say it's been a, a full-on week this week. But strangely enough, the song we sang this morning, uh, a little bit earlier, see, I blew it. <laughs> Jesus is a way maker. Yeah, that's right. He made a way. I felt dry and distracted through the week. And I get up early, I read the word, and I pray probably not enough. In fact, I know I don't pray enough. What is enough? What's enough prayer? Um, I think he says in the word, pray without ceasing. Okay, I don't do that. And this world we live in, it takes everything it can and gives nothing back. Now, our Lord Jesus, after he was baptized, went into the wilderness. And he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And I've said this before, then comes the biggest understatement in the Bible, Matthew 4, 3. He was hungry. Go figure that. 40 days without food. But what happened? Well, the enemy came. Now, the enemy is still around today and he's still tempting people. And do you notice that he picks the most opportune time for him? But we need to be like Christ. We need to be ready. So when this happens, we have scriptures. Did you notice I said when this happens? Because it's not if, it's when. And I think all of us have probably been in a when moment, not an if moment already. But the enemy is stalking across the earth to steal, kill and destroy. And I like to say that if you can stop him stealing your resolve, he won't be able to kill you or destroy you. But how did Christ combat him well in the first trial he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God what a great scripture when someone's trying to tempt you with food you know it's it's truth and the devil would have gone ah missed that one okay he tries twice more though and then Jesus shuts him up and he goes away. But he hasn't left. But the last scripture that God used was you shall worship the Lord your God with, and him only shall you serve. What is it a coincidence that the enemy waited until he thought Jesus was weak and under pressure? Do we, do we get tempted on our best day? No, it's when we're under pressure. And, you know, as analogy is, does a robber go after a bodybuilder after he's picked cash out of the ATM or the older, frailer person with a wheelchair? You know? I know we're not all bodybuilders, but we can be on the inside. We can strengthen our inner man and build him up. Well, Ken, how do we do that? And I am so glad you asked. (laughs) The scriptures I mentioned, we need to get ready and we have to have them an arsenal of these scriptures or a quiver full of, if you're calling them arrows. And we need to be strengthened. Now, Ephesians 6, 10 and on tells us, and it's a bit wordy, but it's, It's the word of God and it's brilliant. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts, of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
Now, the statement of darkness of this age, that's not the age 2,000 years ago it was written. That's today. That's right. It's a living word. And it says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. The next word is stand. So I think it's pretty important that we stand. Now, stand and fight is what I would get from that. Having put on the breastplate of, sorry, girded your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm getting my teeth in the road. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which we all have. You'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance, supplication for all the saints. As I said earlier, I don't think I pray enough. (laughs) Because all perseverance. God's all about being all in. But we need to be armed to protect us. But do you notice that the last statement is not a protective weapon. It's an offensive weapon. It is a, a sword of the spirit so you can fight on. But, okay, if we put on some of the armour of God, we're only going to be somewhat protected. If we put on most of the armour of God, we're going to be mostly protected. Those of age who remember Rocky and Bullwinkle and Batfink and Karate, you know, he said, you cannot harm me. My wings are like a shield of steel. But he said, yeah, but your head's like a marshmallow. He was almost protected. We can't be almost protected because if the devil, who we must acknowledge as being there, we don't acknowledge him as any, anything great. But if he's willing to wait 40 days and 40 nights and try three times to attack Jesus, then we need to be armed and ready. So when you get in a car, do you put your seatbelt on every time? Can anyone tell me when it became compulsory? 1971. I remember it. The the factory fitment for an E.H. Holden was to drill a hole from the outside of your car between the front and back doors and put a bolt in (laughs) and bolt the seatbelt to the inside. That was the factory fix. Like, and there's this bolt head on the outside of your car. It was crap. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> but people used to, just to comply with the law, loop it over their shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. I saw someone get booked, because they, they had it looped over their shoulder, and they said, sir, I'm wearing it. And the policeman said, well, that's strange, because it's hanging out the bottom of the door. <laughs> We can't pretend to wear it, the armour of God. We can't almost wear it. We have to wear it. We have to put it. Jesus doesn't want us just to be in fight mode. In John 4.10, he offers us living water. In verse 14, he tells us that if we drink of this living water, we will not only never thirst again, but the water will become a fountain springing up to eternal life. 
how good's that for a drink? Like, keep your Red Bull, keep any of those things. Living water that springs up to eternal life. And he doesn't just want to refresh us and load us up because he, in Matthew 11, he says, Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I want to make it as simple as I can for me to understand. And if you get it as well, that's great. I'm preaching to myself. Jesus will refresh us. He'll give us living water to eternal life. He'll equip us to resist the enemy. So what is the answer to every question that every one of us got asked at, at, at Sunday school? <laughs> It's Jesus. He is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But he's indescribable. Because here on earth, we do not have the language to tell what he's like. But do you know the problem? In this world, it's not asking the question. This world doesn't care, doesn't want to know does not want to ask the question because the answer might not be one, you know, it might not fit into their, into their uh, realm or their, yeah, their, their circumstances. And a lot of people tell me, oh, I can't understand the Bible. I don't get God. I don't get Jesus. It's just all too big to sort of try and contemplate been listening to Chuck Missler, great, great, great uh, theologian. And he made this quote, a God small enough for my mind to understand probably won't be big enough for my needs. We've got a big, big, big God. I said I want it to be Simple. Well, I'm going to use the kiss factor. Keep it simple, saint. Ah, see, see, I knew someone. I knew someone would come up with it before I did. But the Bible gives me such confidence, and I'll. There's a two two things that I'll. I want to draw on. In Romans, Paul calls himself the chief sinner. The chief among sinners. And he received forgiveness and went on to write all those epistles. And the church is living vicariously through Paul's writing. And he called himself the chief sinner. So if I compare myself to him, I'm doing okay. I'm still a sinner. But the one that gets me across the line daily, weekly, hourly, minute by minute is the seventh letter in, La in Revelation written to the church at Laodicea. This is in Revelation 3 verse 14. And it says, These things says the Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. Well, we know who that is. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say that I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, that's a fairly strong rebuke. This is the church at Laodicea that he's given this to. But this is for the churches today, the saints today. 
And the thing that gets me across the line is verse 19 and 20. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. He's just told them all their faults. I pour out, Lord, all my faults to you. And I come back to this verse and it tells me to be zealous and repent. Gotcha. Straight after that, in verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. This church that's doing all these things wrong, he's standing at the door and knocking. He's forgiving them, telling them to repent. And he's there, ready to pick up the pieces. Regardless of your sin, my sin, he's there with open arms. As a kid, I always thought that God was this monster or big ogre type, you know, huge person trying to stop me getting into heaven because of all the things I'd done wrong. You've done this, you've done this, you've done... He wants us to come to heaven. Yes. It's exactly the opposite. And the last thing is we all qualify. And I can Amen. tell you that from here Thank you, Lord. because you've all got ears. And he says, who that has an ear here. Guess what? We made it. We got two ears. So we qualify. He died for all of us. He's forgiving each of us on a daily basis. Keep short accounts. When we muck up, and again I use a when, not an if. Lord, I've blown it again, forgive me. Yeah. It's done. Yeah, that's right. It's simple. Yeah. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love them as God loves them. So, it is a simple gospel. He's made it so clear, yet this world today Complain, it's an allegory. It's strange wording. I can't understand it. It's written in Greek. Thank the Lord it is written in Greek because of the nuances that we can draw from, from the Greek language. Yes. The translations, well, some of them are a little bit different, but they're done with, with the thought to allow us to have the word of God in our hands. Yeah, that's right. yes. The dark ages were dark because no one had the word of God. That's right. Except the, the Latin or the, the, the priests or whoever they were that could speak Latin. Yeah. Like, no, that's not what it says. My Bible. How would you get a Bible? <laughs> well, they printed them. Everyone's got them now. <laughs> we are so blessed that we can meet like this yeah. openly with a Bible, sing songs to Jesus, lift up his name and worship him. We are truly blessed in this country at the moment. Let's see what they do in the future because they're trying. But I know everyone here. But I said when we first started the church, that I would give an opportunity because I don't know where you are at the moment. I I know where he is. He's standing at the door right beside you, knocking. He's knocking on that door. So let's all close our eyes. Lord, Heavenly Father, 
Come into this place, Lord. Repeat after me, if you will. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I ask you into my life. I pray tomorrow I can be different to how I was today. And that you will be with me everywhere I go as protection against the enemy who is trying. But I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.